Michael, here we are at uh, the battery show. I see the sign, it says, non-rare earth motors made in the USA. Right. Take us through what you've come up with here. So uh, everybody, I think most people know, your readers or your viewers will know about the rare earth issues. You know, that China's basically dominating, uh, over, up to, some people say 98.5% of the world's rare earth minerals, some people just say 90%. It doesn't matter, it's, it's big. Uh, and so as a result, uh, rare earth magnets are being throttled to Western uh, manufacturers. Like we just saw Jim Farley talked about uh, that he had to shut down a plant for two weeks. Another investor from Isuzu came to me, they actually, same thing, two weeks, they had, had to shut down a plant because they could not get rare earth magnets. So this is something that's pervasive in the industry. So a long time ago, I started working with ferrite motors at some previous employers I was with. And I've, I've been doing electric motors for about 25 years. And so I've been through the, the totally magnet-free motors. I've done the rare earth magnets. And I saw very quickly that non-rare earth magnets have a lot of performance they can give because they're so durable, so tough. And so I started thinking, and I did this in the automotive world with some, several concept vehicles uh, from the 90s and the 2000s, et cetera, where I use the weakest material. You design it because it's usually the lowest cost. When it comes to magnets, that's it. Ferrites are about $10 a kilogram. Rare earths about $275 a kilogram. So it's a huge difference there. So if you design for a weaker material, and then you're gonna have a, a, a better, lower cost uh, solution for manufacturers that don't need the absolute max, you know, unobtainium type you know, levels, like a hypercar or something like that. So there's plenty of applications where uh, a, a ferrite motor is gonna work just fine. And that's what we did. But in order to use a weaker magnet, you have to increase the surface area inside of a motor. So what we've done, all of our IP is basically we use up as much interior volume as possible with weaker magnets to create the same torque that a rare earth motor can actually do. Well, well show me here. You've, you've, yeah. you've got some components laid out here. Show us how you've uh, expanded the, the surface area. So this is what's called a hybrid stator, and it's actually rack seal. Some people coin that term rack seal, and radial and axial together is what that means. So you have the radial portion here, and then you have these somaloy wing tips here. The, uh, that they basically pull, they collect the flux coming off the end turns of the coils for the axial rotors, and then the radial portion is taking care of the radial rotor. And if you look inside over here, you can see that's one of the axial rotors here, and this is one of the radial rotors here. Now the other thing we did too is most of the losses in an electric motor have to do with I square R losses, which are you know through the current, the coils. The other ones are back iron losses. And amazingly, back iron losses basically just edge out the copper losses by one or two percent. So if you cut back irons out of a motor, you're dropping that back iron loss immensely. So that's why our motors have no back irons. So the, the, uh, you do have losses still through some of the poles, but the other difference here with our motors is that uh, traditional motors are magnetized this direction. We're magnetized tangentially. So that's why this is kind of like a haulback without being a haulback. So we call it a permanent magnet synchronous reluctance configuration, but there's no magnetic flux coming out this side where normally you would have to have a back iron to collect it and return the path. So the other thing you'll notice inside these motors is we have no loose wires inside these motors. Everything's bus bar assembled, that type of thing. So, there, so you could automate the assembly so of this very easily, right? It is, it's the first motor that's actually designed from day one to be assembled in a single robotic cell. It's a fully automatic pick and place machine can actually assemble this motor because it's the first motor ever designed from the bottom up. And then the EMAG was done to make it work. And other motor companies I've worked with in the past, for example, they go off and they do all this amazing work to create the EMAG model they need. Then they go, now we need to figure out how to make this. You know? <laughs> So we actually, I have a big background with design for assembly, design for manufacturing. So I've been doing that for about 30 years or so. And, uh, and so that's why this motor, a single robotic cell, built from the backside all the way up, no fasteners, everything's held together by snap rings. So yes, yeah, so there's no threaded fasteners, no, elk, no wires, no connectors inside, none of that. You so, really thought this through. Yeah, we, we try, you know, because again, if you're going to make something in America, you pull out some of these uh, monotonous jobs, you know, that people are just sitting there doing, or something that requires a lot of manual dexterity, that type of thing. So we designed all of it out. 
and uh, and it's the same thing with our drone motors that we're doing too. The drone motors even have less components than these motors do. So, for example, a drone motor has only about 10 components in it. It's actually only got one coil per phase in our drone motors and only one stator pole per, per phase. So you can imagine that, wow, that's easy to put together. You know? And again, we can use the same rack seal configuration where we wrap it around the stator or You'll, we find with stronger and stronger magnets, you actually need less of the axial and just and just focus on the radial portion. So, so our technology and our IP covers all of those aspects, as well as a lot of the manufacturing process. And then to trump it all too, for our, all of our drone motors, we're working with Niron magnetics. Yeah, and they've got a really good, uh, a, a strong Niron uh, or strong non rare earth magnet. It's about twice the power of a ferrite magnet. And so we're working with Niron on that for all of our drone motors. And then down the line, we've got in our R&D, we actually have our own non earth magnet technology as well as our own non, uh, our, as well as our SMC technology too, so. So here you are uh, at the show. Anybody come knocking on the door? What kind of interest is there in your we're, motor? We're getting a lot of interest. So one thing when you start a motor company and having been this through before with some other startups, you get a lot of people that flood to you and that, you know, that they want the, to kick the tires, take a look, that kind of thing. So. You know, we're being, the other thing you got to watch when you're starting a company like this is you got to manage growth, you know. And so managing growth is very important, so you got to kind of pick and choose the customers that you want to work with that are kind of, A, fit in with your existing model that you've got, and number two, that aren't going to be a huge distraction to what you're trying to do to make sure that the technology is ready. And so I always drill into everybody's head. It's always product, product, product first, and then everything else comes second. So. And so we, we have a lot of interest already with Michigan mobility companies in land, sea, and air. Uh, but what the interesting thing is, we started to do these hub type motors for some of the land vehicles. And these are companies like um, Livoc, uh, Entermode, uh, Wheelme, those types of land based things, warehouse robotics, and those types of, and, and off road ATVs. But real quickly, the drone companies came in again because what happened in April, the current administration banned T Motor from the US. And when they did that, T-Motor supplied a substantial number of commercial drone manufacturers here in the U.S. So they're all flocking to other to any anybody who can give them some motors. And so we've seen that inrush come from drone companies saying, we need drone motors and we need them now. And so luckily, the state of Michigan has been very kind to us. So they've given several grants to these drone companies to work with modal motors to create their drone motors. So basically you get them flying again. But the thing we're doing is we can do it with higher efficiency and more thrust density than what the Chinese motors uh, with rare earth magnets were able to do. Michael, great story. Thank Thanks you. so much for telling it. Thank you, John. I really appreciate it. The automotive industry continues to evolve and so do the opportunities to define it. Borg Warner, one of the world's most admired companies, gets its partners where they need to go. Let's do something big together.